planet look like eyeballs, and that's okay. Actually, many planets look like eyeballs. Hi everyone, astrobiologist here with a fun, weird little fact for you. We don't have any eyeball planets in our solar system, unfortunately, but we live in a pretty unique one. Most solar systems have a teeny tiny M-class star at the center and very close in planet. In fact, an M-star solar system is only about the size of Jupiter and its moons. Now, when your planets are all close together like that, some weird physics happens. The rotation rate of the planet will start to slow until the rotation rate matches the revolution rate. This is called tidal locking. It has an equation that's pretty complicated, but the strongest factors are the distance to the star and the size of the planet. The most familiar example of tidal locking is how we always see the same face of the moon. The moon orbits like this and not like that. Its revolution rate is the same as its rotation rate. It's always facing the Earth. So all these tiny solar systems, which by the way, make up like 75% of all solar systems in the galaxy, all have this phenomenon going on. All their planets have permanent day sides and permanent night sides, which can lead to some pretty weird looking planets. Here's one artist's interpretation of a tidally locked planet. The day side is too hot for water. The night side is frozen ice. The middle part, which astronomers unironically refer to as the Terminator, could potentially be habitable depending on its stability. Similarly, a water world actually would look like an eyeball because there's going to be some temperature boundary between the liquid water and the ice. Now, arguably this whole planet is habitable because who knows what's living under that ice. So most stars are M stars and most planets are close enough to be tidally locked which means that the galaxy is just chock full of giant eyeballs. Just something to think about. Anyways, if you like my content, consider subscribing and keep an eye out for my upcoming book, Life in Seven Numbers, available next summer through Princeton University Press.